Hello friends, in this video I'd like to show you what I believe is the best technique to handle a small, mobile, hard brown neomogagnian cataract. Having tried many techniques and having found it almost always very very difficult to handle these types of cataract, I think I finally stumbled upon the ideal way to go about it. This elderly lady was being operated upon under topical anesthesia. She kept moving her eyes and her head about during the surgery. So I'm carefully performing the capsular excess with the help of a cystotome. However, there is going to be a little problem in doing so because there is no support for the capsule against which you can tear it easily. In this case, I have managed to get a 5 mm capsular rexus. The cortical cleavage hydro dissection is strictly not needed. The reason why I am using the hydro dissection maneuver in this patient is to gauge how hard the underlying small hard nucleus is. And as I uncap the cortical shell, I find that there is a very hard brown cataract that lies beneath the surface. Now this is what the sister gave me, a 1mm exposed tip, however you need at least a 1.5mm exposure of the phaco tip to handle this type of cataract with the help of a direct chop. So let's move on to the actual procedure and I'll tell you some fine points by which you can go ahead with the direct chop in this patient. You have to use sufficiently high power. I'm using a power of 50% and I'm using a vacuum of 350. You have to take your time to bury the 1.5 millimeter exposed phaco tip into the heart and substance of the nucleus. Now see what I do. I start the chop not close to the tip but I go to the mid periphery almost to the edge of the nucleus. This is a small nucleus and once you start near the periphery, it is easy to create the crack. Once the crack happens, you can propagate and extend this there by taking the second instrument deep within the groove and then with very little lateral separation, you can get this nucleus to completely crack. I mobilize the fragments, I break it down into smaller fragments. Now the trick is to break down the nucleus into as many small fragments as possible and then eat it up. Because the fragment creation does not require phaco power. You are using mechanical forces. It's only while eating up the pieces that you use phaco power. Therefore, by creating multiple small fragments, you are actually relying more on mechanical energy to break down the nucleus. And that is why I would like and recommend that you break it down into multiple small pieces. Now once you have broken it down, then with the same multiburst mode, I am emulsifying these fragments once they have been created. Although this technique may look like it is a cross between a horizontal and a direct chop or a peripheral and a central chop, this is the best way to do it. Maybe you get the best of both worlds. The reason why you need to start the chop close to the periphery of the lens after getting a good hold is because you know that the lens is a spindle shaped structure which is thickest in the center and becomes thinner and thinner as it goes towards the periphery. And once you start the chop near the periphery of the lens, it is easier to get the crack started and initiate the crack. And once the crack is initiated or started at this point, it is easy to propagate it to the center by using mechanical forces. Once I have adopted this technique of trying to chop the lens, I do not find any difficulty in handling this hard mogagnian cataract. I come to the final piece and as I have learned from my mistakes in the past, I go out and fill the chamber with viscoelastic. The methyl cellulose will replace the balance all solution. It is a much more viscous fluid and therefore it will counteract the surge while removing the last piece. 
and there is also much less risk of damaging the posterior capsule while evacuating the final fragment. I hope this has been useful for you and I hope you can incorporate it in your practice and management of hard cataract. Thank you for your attention.